a new year. I have financial goals and I know you do too. I mean, who doesn't have financial goals? Well, maybe billionaires don't have financial goals or maybe they actually do have financial goals because that's probably what got them to billionaire status. But for us regular people out there, we have tons of financial goals like starting a new business, getting out of debt and saving and investing more. So it is time to make sure that we plan to hit our financial goals. I'll show you how to budget for an entire year. Yes, an entire year in just 10 minutes to ensure that you actually meet your financial goals. Hi, I'm Shane of The Wealth Vibe and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income and build wealth and if you fail to plan then you plan to fail and that is exactly what I don't want to happen to you one of the ways that I was able to reach a lot of my financial goals is through planning and through budgeting to ensure that I actually hit the financial goals and I want you to do the same exact thing that I've been able to achieve which is to knock some of your financial goals out of the park so we're going to sit down together and we're going to go over an annual budget and this is going to allow you to budget in just a few minutes for the entire year. And the really great thing about it is that you can do it in one sitting and then you don't have to worry about your budget throughout the year and you can be sure that you're going to actually meet your financial goals because you plan to hit them. So let's dive in. So I'm going to be using a spreadsheet to do my annual budget and you can choose to do a spreadsheet as well and if you want a spreadsheet that will help you to do your annual budget for the year you can check out my annual budget down in the description box below where you can download the same copy of the budget that I'm using. But if you're more of a pen and paper type of person you can definitely do your annual budget on pen and paper too because the same principles apply whether you're doing it on paper or via the computer the really cool thing about the computer is that the computer will do all the calculations for you you'll have to do you know all the math so you can do it either way that works for you so that's the first thing the second thing that I want to say about doing annual budgets is that it's really important to review your spending so if you have never done a budget before or if this is your first time doing an annual budget, I really suggest that you take a moment to think about how you've spent your money in the past. So I've done a full video on this before on how to do a three to six month review of your finances. So you'll want to check out the video right here that's linked up in the cards. And basically you're going to get a really good idea of how much money you spend in different categories. And this is going to help you to plan for this coming year because you'll have a really good standing point or starting point for what you actually do versus what you think you do. And you can actually look at that and say, you know what, I want to do better in these ways. So that is a really good thing that you can do. Now, the next thing that you want to do before you do an annual budget is you want to set out some of your financial goals because this is a time where you're going to plan for them because you're going to make sure that you're baking it in to your budget throughout the year so that way by the end of the year you're not like, did I actually save as much as I want? Did I actually invest as much as I want? Did I actually pay as much debt off as I wanted to, you won't have to guess about that because you bake in your financial goals into your annual budget. So those are the three things that you'll want to think about before sitting down to do your own annual budget. Do you want to do a spreadsheet or do you want to do a pen and paper? And you want to have a good idea of how much you spend in certain categories. And then lastly, you want to have your financial goals planned out. So let's get into the spreadsheet and then we'll work through how to do an annual budget and I'm going to be showing you my annual budget as an example. I have my budget template here pulled up and what you'll see is not only does it have all the months for the year, but it also has all of the categories that I could possibly spend in throughout the year. And when you do your budget review for three to six months, or maybe you could even do it for a year, you will have a really good idea of what your spending categories are. And so I have all of the spending categories that are out there and this is a really good start in place just to get your mind going in terms of what are the things that you spend on and you can easily edit any of these things out or just skip that row if it doesn't apply for that particular month 
or at all for you. You can just skip over it. You can edit this as much as you want or as little as you want. So you'll see here that some of the categories that I have are forgiving, saving and investments, housing, utilities, food, transportation, health, insurance, personal, entertainment, children, travel, and debts. And so I think that pretty much covers the gamut in terms of things that you could possibly spend your money on. But like I said, if you want to add anything else, you can definitely do that. The way that I do my annual budget is I first look at one category, and then I plan out my expenses for the first month, and then I will consider how those expenses will play out throughout the rest of the year. So the first category in this spreadsheet is giving. And I'm going to plan out for January. So in terms of January, I know that the only expense that I will have in the giving category will be for ties. I typically tie 10% of my income to my church. And so I know for this month, my income will be really low. I will only get income from YouTube. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this month. So I probably will only be tithing like $50 at max this, this month. And the reason for that is because I teach and I, my teaching job will not start until the end of January. Therefore, I won't be getting paid in January at all because I'm paid bi-weekly. And so I'm going to put $50 in for tithes and then I'm going to leave everything else at zero because I don't have any charity, birthdays, or holidays, or gifts that I need to spend money on for this month. So now I'm going to think about the rest of the year. So in terms of tithes, I expect my tithes to go up in February. So I expect that my total income in February will be about $1,300. So then my tithes will be about $130. And then it'll probably stay the same in March. And then I plan to have income from a full-time job starting in April. And so my income will probably go up to about $6,000. So I'm gonna put $600 for ties. And then I know that should be the same for the rest of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this all the way until December. And then I can think about charity. I don't typically give to charity at all. Um, that's just not something that I do. I tend to spend my giving when it comes to ties. Um, then for birthdays, I do plan to give gifts to my family members for their birthdays. And I'm setting a budget of $50 for my family members. So that also includes my boyfriend. So his birthday is in August. So I'm gonna spend about, I would say $75 for him. And then for my mom, dad, and my brother, and my sister, their birthdays are in October, November, and December. <laughs> so I'm gonna spend $50 for my brother, and then $100 for my mom and my sister, and then $50 for my dad. And so that's it for birthdays for me. And then for holidays, I don't spend anything for holidays except for I probably will be spending money for Thanksgiving holiday for this year. I probably will try to contribute to um, the food or something wherever I decide to go this year. So I'll probably say like $100 for holidays in November. And then for gifts, I do want to give holiday gifts or Christmas gifts to my family and my boyfriend for this year. I want to give about $100 worth of gifts per person. So that works out to $500 because there are five people. So I'm going to go ahead and put $500 here. So that is my budgeting for my giving for the entire year. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to move down to my savings and investments. So in terms of emergency fund, I plan to stack up my emergency fund a bit more in the month of April. I plan to put about $1,000 and then I'll probably put anything extra towards my 
my um, emergency fund if I have anything left to, to contribute to that category after everything else is planned out. And then I don't have any education expenses and then my IRA. So one of my financial goals is to max out my IRA. So this is where this comes into play. So when you come across a, a category or a line item in the annual budget that is related to one of your financial goals, this is where you start to plan for that. So since I wanna max out my IRA for the year, I'm gonna to have to contribute $500 per month. So that means that I will end up contributing up to $6,000 for the year. So I'm gonna go ahead and put $500 here in the IRA call or row and I'm gonna drag that all the way over. And so that's it for savings and investments. So now I'm gonna go on to the housing category. So in the housing category, we have mortgage, rent, storage, property taxes, and any association dues, like if you have an HOA. So I currently live with my boyfriend and I plan to rent in, in about May or so. So right now I don't pay anything in rent. But in May, I plan to spend some money in rent and I'm anticipating about $1,000 a month in rent. So I'm gonna go ahead under May and put in $1,000 and then drag that over for the rest of the year. So there we go. And then for storage, I pay for storage because all of my items from my last apartment are in storage and I spend about $88 a month on storage. So I'll have to pay for storage until till May. So I'm gonna put $88 there and then drag that over until May. And so that's it for housing. And I just go throughout the entire spreadsheet like this. And I'm gonna keep going with you so we can see how I'm gonna be able to hit some of my other financial goals. And then last we have our debt. So thankfully I only have one debt left, which is my student loans. So I'm gonna go down to student loan here and then I am paying about um, $75 a week towards the interest on my student loans every single month. And so that comes out to $250 a month. And so I plan to sustain that until I get a job. My goal is for this year to pay off my unsubsidized student loans. I have two unsubsidized student loans with my one service provider. One of them is $18,000 and the other one is $5,000. So that's about $23,000 worth of student loans that I plan to pay off this year. So for this month, I'm gonna be paying $250 in interest. And that'll probably be the same until about May. So I'm gonna drag that over. And so I can see here that that's $1,000 that I will be paying. So that's really just interest. And so I would need to pay another, I would probably need to pay the whole $24,000 from May to December. So I have some other goals I'm not gonna discuss in this video, so make sure that you're subscribed so that you can see what my other financial goals are so that I will be able to pay off this amount of money in this year. But if I want to pay off, $24,000 between May and December. So <clears throat> May is the fifth month. And so that gives me seven months. And if I wanna pay $24,000 divided by seven months, I need to pay $3,428 a month towards my student loan. And really that's probably like at a minimum, I probably need to pay probably closer to 3,500. So I'm gonna put 3,500 and then yeah, I'm gonna put $3,500 a month in here and then drag that over. And then we'll see that that comes out to $29,000 a month. 29,000, or not a month, <laughs> $29,000 a year. Oh, if I had $29,000 a month to pay student loans, I wouldn't know what to do. So that's how I did my annual budget and that is it. I spent this amount of time here now and I know exactly how I'm going to reach my financial goals just by sitting down and going through this budget for the entire year. And I also am able to see how much I'm spending each one of these categories throughout the year. So I'm able to see, okay, hey, do I wanna adjust any of these things 
for you know my spending like am I okay with you know only saving and investing seven thousand dollars for the year and if I'm not okay with that I can tweak the numbers and I can make sure that they actually fit the financial goals that I want to achieve and I'm also able to see how much money I'm spending on a monthly basis in this column for the item itself and also for the category so this is really good and the great thing about this is that everything that I filled out here for every single month is auto populated into a monthly budget so as you can see here, all the numbers that I put in, like $50 for ties is here, the $500 for IRA is here, the $79 for my phone is here. And this allows me to see how much money I plan to spend in these categories when I sat down and did my annual budget. And then all I have to do is, one, maybe update the plan because maybe things have changed because you have to be a little bit flexible when it comes to your budgeting because things might come up that you didn't know were gonna happen in January. And you can then update that. Or you can see what you planned and then go in and put in your actual budget and see how you're actually matching up. So if I were to, you know, go in and fill in these numbers, then I can see how much I'm actually spending compared to what I had planned to spend when I sat down and did my annual budget. If you're interested in learning more about how to meet your financial goals, I have tons of strategies that will help you to either eliminate debt, increase your income, and build wealth. So you'll want to check out these videos right here, and I hope that this annual budget is going to help you these 10 minutes that you spend to do your annual budget is going to help you to stay on track with your financial goals throughout the year thanks for watching